It's one thing to own less, that's great. It's a whole other thing to want less. It's one thing to like have a budget and stick to it. It's another thing to walk through a store or peruse a website or see something you like and think, no, I'm great. I'm content and full of joy for what I have and who I am. That's where the real money is, pun intended. So step one toward freedom from our slavery to the desire for more is to limit how much we own. But the next step that is even more important is to give out of what we have. As Jesus said, sell your possessions and give to the poor. Now the tense of the original Greek, for those of you thinking, does that li like, is that literal? Like sell every single thing I am and like walk around without, no, not at all. First off, it's hyperbole. And second, the tense in the original Greek is aorist active, meaning it's not a one-time event, it's a way of life. The idea is on a regular basis, sell your extra stuff and give the money to the poor and those in need. And we cringe when we read that line from Jesus. But remember, Jesus also said, it is better to give than to receive. The word better there is makarios in Greek, and it literally means happy. We are happier if we give than if we receive. Or put another way, a happy life is the result of generosity far more than it is the result of greed. Now, few of us believe Jesus on this one. In all honesty, I don't at a, on a regular basis. In spite, of the fact that so, in spite of the fact that social science has time and again said the exact same thing, that shocker, Jesus was spot on. Sociologist Christian Smith and Hilary Davidson in The Paradox of Generosity write this, those who give receive back in turn. By spending ourselves for others' well-being, we enhance our own standing. This is not only a philosophical or religious teaching, it is a sociological fact. People rightly say that money cannot buy happiness, but money and happiness are still related in a curious way. Happiness can be the result not of spending more money on oneself, but rather of giving money away to others. The data examined here show in their study show this not to be just a nice idea, but a social scientific fact. In their research, generosity correlates to greater levels of personal happiness, physical health, lower levels of depression, a sense of purpose, and a higher interest in personal growth. As the way of Jesus has long said, giving is Jesus' antidote to the disease of greed. Think about it. One way to frame the spiritual journey is as a lifelong movement off of the egoic operating system and into a life of agape. Under that frame, slavery is defined as greed and freedom as an inner kind of woman or man of self-giving, generous, sacrificial love where we take on the inner life of the Trinity in our own body. Every step we take toward generosity is a step toward freedom and life. Generosity has all sorts of benefits. It deepens our trust in God and his provision. It deepens our love for him and a sense of his love for us. It cultivates a spirit of gratitude. It cultivates a deep sense of enjoyment for the simple, ordinary pleasures of life, a meal or a chat with a friend or a sunrise. It puts money in its rightful place in our heart. It blesses other people. It makes the world a more just place with more equity and less tension. It cares for the earth in such a way that we can pass it on for generations to come. It makes it possible for the gospel and the church to grow and expand all around the world. And it sets our heart free from the desire for more. For all of those reasons and other ones, the time to start is now. In a global recession in the middle of COVID-19? Yes, right now. One, because contrary to what most people assume, the more money you make, the harder it is to give it away. Take uh, tithing, for example, more on that in a minute. But if you're a college student and you make 500 bucks a month from a part-time job, the tithe on that is 50 bucks. That's a lot of money, in particular for a college student. And it's hard at first to give that up. That's, you know, whatever. But let's say you graduate and let's say like you just killed it. You, you have background behind you and you get a really good job where you make $5,000 a month. 
The tithe on that is $500, the same amount as your previous paycheck. It will always be harder to give away $500 than it is to give away $50. The same is true no matter how much money you do or do not make. And two, because of spiritual formation, because you and I are becoming a soul, because as we've said before, at first we make our choices and then our choices make us. With each step toward a generous life or away from a generous life, we are becoming more free or more and more enslaved to the greed of our own heart and its chronic dissatisfaction. And anyone can be generous, no matter where you fall on the socioeconomic bracket, no matter how much money you have or don't have, whether you are a middle schooler or a retiree, you don't have to be rich, you don't even need a steady job, you don't even need money. Many of you are out of work right now. You can be generous with the resource of your time or your prayer or your relationship or your attention. And generosity is a spiritual discipline, meaning while we follow the Spirit's movement in our heart, we also discipline our budget to give when we feel like it. And when, in all honesty, we don't really feel like it. When we have extra and when, da, we had a bill come that was unexpected and we just barely have enough. We don't wait around for lightning to strike us with inspiration or the lotto to make it rich or that we just, it's a discipline. We start small and move forward. 